Yeah, yeah, we were here nine years ago, Sarah and I. My, my wife and I met on, on the show 24 and came with it in 2003. And now we're here and we're celebrating our, our 10th anniversary in September and we'll be going back into the works in Los Angeles with kids starting school and probably won't get a chance to go away. So it feels like a kind of 10-year um, anniversary in, in a lot of ways here for us. Honeymoon. Perfect place to have your 10-year anniversary. How yeah. would you describe, or how do you describe your kids back home or your friends? Like, how do you describe Monte Carlo as someone who has never been here? Well, the image of, of Beverly Hills on a float came into my mind yesterday for some reason because the modern side of Monte Carlo is so opulent and so sort of not really like a European city. It has this other surreal quality to it of, uh, of glamour and all that. But we walked up the hills into, uh, I guess, the village of Monaco, um, is what I could make out from the signs. And behind the cathedral and in that area where all the cobblestone streets are. And that's where you really do feel like you are in a, a beautiful, old European town. And it's, uh, it's so beautiful. The setting is just, you can see why it's always attracted people for generations. As you said, you were here nine years ago for the TV festival. So you kind of know how, how fun this, this whole weekend is yeah. for the music industry. Now you're here with, um, I know what show you're with, but tell me what show you're, brings you to this festival and what you're showcasing. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm here with Nikita, uh, which is on the CW in the States, but airs internationally through various outlets, I guess. Um, and it's sort of fun to meet some of those outlets and see some of those different areas where, where it goes, because you're never quite certain. But I'm also uh, here with, uh, in, in an odd way, with a show that uh, aired internationally as a, as a miniseries the first time around and is likely to do the same while it aired uh, domestically on Hulu, which is a show called The Booth at the End. So I'm here doing a little bit of publicity for that as well, because we just finished shooting the second season of that. Well, I have to say, as an actor, I feel like you've done a little bit of everything. I mean, I know you from so many different mm -hmm. films, from 24, now from Nikita. So you talk to me specifically about Nikita and um, just the, the fan reaction here. Do people recognize you as Percy, or how, what is the fan reaction like here? Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of people uh, say how much they're enjoying the show and, and how much they get a kick out of the character and, uh, and, and uh, having a beard and sunglasses and hat, enough to have people like kind of suddenly surprised that I was underneath there. Um, but uh, yeah, the character seems to register with people in a really fun way because it's, uh, you know, he's evil, but I, I keep finding reasons for why he is. and. Uh, and there seems to be a, a, a lot of fun on the part of the audience following that. Is it hard sometimes for fans to differentiate? I mean, do they think that you're evil? You always hear people that play kind of a more villainous character or a meaner character that some of the fans might well, kind of yell at them or <laughs> think they're Yeah, okay. sometimes. I don't run into too much of that. I, I think there, I've, I've had uh, journalists be intimidated to, because I play these very intimidating characters. and. And, but with the fans that I come in contact, and they'll acknowledge that by way of diffusing it, but um, I, I, I am so not that way in person that I think people get a sense of that. And, um, and I think the audiences that, uh, maybe the ones that are really intimidated don't come up to me, the ones that do are uh, ones that realize very much it's a, it's a fantasy and it's just a character. Well, I'm surprised because I, I guess it was two years ago that Maggie, Mm -hmm. Talked with her while the show was really just launching. Mm -hmm. And I believe that you just wrapped season two. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay, talk to me about where Nikita has left off at the end of season two and where your character has left off. And what yeah, well, there's in a lot of these outlets, um, they're just beginning to air season two. And in the course of that time, I go from sort of the, 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 the Count of Monte Cristo myth of uh, the guy in power that gets brought down and locked up and kept down and then slowly has to rebuild and get free of this prison and then go rogue for a period of time before taking back power of the organization. But where they're, where they're turning it now, uh, you, you know, frankly, as soon as you start stealing plutonium and start aiming 
the, uh, the missile defense system at various nuclear sites, around, you know that you're not going to be long for this world altogether. There's really nowhere else left for you to go. And the way they want the show to go is for her to take back over the organization that she's loathed all these years, but that was a kind of home for her and allow her <clears throat> to run operations out of there and take down various other bad guys along the way. I want to talk to you too about, it seems like, you know, when you're part of, when you're shooting something like Nikita, you shoot in Canada, don't you, are you? Yeah. Okay, I mean, yeah. you're shooting kind of in a vacuum, a little bit of a vacuum, a lot of the actors talk about that while yeah. you're kind of in that show. But while you're shooting that, do you um, feel like this is a show that, that was real, because people love the show, is, do you, do you do you know like, while you're shooting it that this show would be a hit and a success when, when you're part of it? Like, do you get that feeling as an actor that this could be something great? Well, you, you know, you do and you don't because there's always this feeling. And every, I don't think anybody sets out with anything other than the hope or intention to have it reach an audience. And I've never worked on a pilot at any point along the way that everybody didn't come back thrilled about the way it was coming out and convinced that it was going to be a huge success. And not all of them are. And it, 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 it's, it's been interesting with, with Nikita because um, I, th I think there was a sense early on that this would have an international appeal. It's kind of got all the right elements. But it wasn't so much of a hit domestically. So it, it, was, uh, it was making good money for Warner Brothers because they, they had control of the international rights. Um, but the CW that was actually paying the bills for the show itself wasn't getting the, the domestic intake that, that they were hoping for in the way of viewership. And, and uh, one way or another, because Warner Brothers owns half of uh, the CW. I think they must have made some kind of an arrangement with CBS to make it exciting and worth their while to share in the international profits on some level to keep it going. And with, with the cast, do you, do you get to, to hang out together? I mean, do the cast hang out and you have a, a fun time on set? Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. My, I, my wife moved, um, she was very pregnant at the time I got offered the job, and I, I, I said to her, I looked at her, I said, Toronto. And she said, why wouldn't we? And I said, are you sure? You're going to, yeah, okay. And so we picked up lock, stock, and barrel, and moved to Toronto from Los Angeles, having just finished a big remodel on our house, and just thought, okay. And uh, settled, just sort of picked a spot. She, she suggested we stay at the beaches, and that's a beautiful part of Toronto I knew nothing about before having moved there. And it turned out to be five minutes from the studio. It had an elementary school across the street for our older daughter. And, Lake Ontario at one end and Queen Street at the other end of the block and uh, everything within walking distance, a great community of people and a fantastic experience in the past two years living and working there in Toronto. And the, the cast became like family and they'd come over to dinner and come out to the lake with us and we just had a, a great time all the way around and I had a great schedule. From Toronto so. to the beaches to Monte Carlo, you're, you're having fun. It seems like you, you, you yeah. like your career choice and your life. It seems like you're having I, a good time. I, I, I try to think of the regret, but it doesn't come to mind. It's just been a great experience, a great ride so far. I'm there wrapping me up, but I just wanted to ask, what are you looking most forward to this week at the festival? Is there something that you're just dying to do while you're here this time in Monte Carlo? Well, I'm looking very much forward to seeing Prince Albert again, uh, and uh, I'm so grateful for everything that the festival provided for us uh, again, and and just to see our friends with, with Howard Gordon and his wife Cammy last night, and we were all together here nine years ago, and and so it's it's, it's seeing groups of friends, at different places that you go, and then in this beautiful environment, it's it's all good. I love too that you get to bring your wife to a party with the Prince of Monaco for your ten year anniversary. Yeah, yeah, and. And he, he's so lovely and gracious and actually knows who we are. And what, how absurd and flattering is that? Yeah. Such a nice 